We've got another tandem OLED for you, and this time it's from the panel manufacturers themselves, LG. Life's good. This is the LG GX7, their Ultra Gear line. It's a 1440p monitor at 280 hertz, and I don't know what tape to get rid of first, so let's... I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it's not curved just because the box is pretty flat. It's not like this wide or this tall. You know, don't do what I'm doing. I mean, one, you should use a knife, not a screwdriver, and two, uh, that's kind of dangerous with panels because the panel might be under there. Let's see what's in the box. We've got ooh, heavy metal stand, solid double column design with a big flat base so you can stick stuff on it. Love to see it. And then we've got our oh, oh. considering this is just a 27 inch monitor. I think this is a little overbuilt, <laughs> but I'd rather overbuilt than underbuilt. Let's put it together. Just slot that in and then there we go. I love the toolless design of monitors. But yeah, so for a 27 inch monitor, this is a lot. I I don't know if they're just gonna use the same stand and base for like the whole Ultra Gear line. And so that's why they're just going with this one design. Um, but hey, at least you got it. And then otherwise we got our little accessories box here. Non C13, this is a C8 power cable. Um, ours came with a random uh, probably Korean plug. So we put an actual one in here just because, you know, you're gonna need it. External power brick. Some of you might hate that. Some of you might love it. I'll let the people decide. Uh, the nice thing is this monitor is gonna be a similar price to that Asus one we looked at. It's gonna be dollars for a tandem OLED 1440p, 27 inch, 280 hertz display. I can't believe that prices are just coming down as much as they are in OLEDs, and I'm really excited for the future. Ah, uh, yes, here's our non-North American power cable. USB-B to attach to our computer. HDMI 2.1, and then one display port cable. It's only DP 1.4, so we're not getting DP 2.1 with UHBR20, but 280 hertz, 1440p, that's fine. Warranty stuff, regulatory information. We've got this thing in Korean that I cannot read, uh, but it tells me all the things that come with the monitor and it looks like we got them all. Don't hold your monitor by the top. Please don't do that. Don't fully extend it from the wall. Okay, cool, enough of that. Uh, let's see what the actual panel looks like. Mm. Okay, this is a minor annoyance. I strongly prefer those bags where they got a slit in the back so you can just pop the stand on and pop it on. Um, this is gonna take a bit of finagling here. And I wanna be extra careful because these are delicate. But I gotta say, it's super thin. I mean, if you've been looking at OLED monitors for the last couple of years, you know that like the panel itself is just razor thin. And the only bulge you got on the back is for the like electronics powering everything. Oh. Now that's a monitor. As for ergonomics and the stand itself, I mean, you saw this thing, it's a beast. Um, but in terms of what it can do, can we... Eh? eh? Can it go the other way though? That's what I wanna know. It cannot. So if you're gonna get this and it's gonna eventually become a secondary display, uh, be aware of where you're gonna put it. Or just put it on an arm and fix all your problems. Other than that, we can tilt, yep. Go to mount and wub it up and down. I'd like to go down a little further, like probably closer to here, but realistically, this is probably fine, and that's such a minor gripe that uh, I'm okay with it. That looks like, what, eight inches? No, God, no. You wish it was an eight-inch gap. <laughs> I'm guessing that's about, a, I don't know, five-inch gap, and it saved its best trick for last. You've actually got quite a few degrees of rotation here. So wherever you wanna put this monitor on the stand, it can actually move around quite a bit for you. I do wonder though, like the control box has all this space up top. I don't know why they've got this like whole strap chin here. Like that's kind of my only real complaint to like just move it up a quarter inch and then it just fully disappears. But maybe they got their own reasons, I don't know. Despite what y'all might think, I don't design and create monitors, I just own them. Otherwise, yeah, there's not too much else to say. We've got the big LG Ultra Gear styled logo on the back. I'm gonna get this. That's a really hard P. Oh, that's a thick plastic. Very nice. It's this elevated little logo here, so you can actually feel it as you move your fingers across. That's probably why they use the extra thick plastic. And you know, you're never gonna see that ever again. 
but it feels good and I like it. And then they've just got their cool pattern on the back too. I actually really like this. They've been doing this for quite a while now. I like it, I like the texture. But what about the IO? Ah, this, this terrifies me every time I do it. One thing that I really like about a lot of LG monitors is that a lot of their IO, not every time, sometimes it's up and down, but a lot of the time it comes out straight out the back. And so, I struggle every time when I'm trying to plug in a monitor, either HDMI cable or power cable, if it's got that like recess and then you go up, annoying, sucks. Do it like this so that they come straight out the back. I don't care if it takes up a little more uh, horizontal space or whatever, it makes it so much easier to plug stuff in. So we've got two HDMI 2.1 ports, display port port, nicely you know, bundled together so it's really easy to find them all, USB-B, a couple of USB-A, and then our power plug. As for on the bottom here, we've got our navigation oven and mic headphone combo jack instead of just a headphone jack. So you can actually just take a full headset and plug it right into your monitor, which is nice. Oh, and Kensington lock. So far, initial impressions are it seems pretty solid, especially for the price, but I'm not gonna really know what it's like until I game on it. But I can't do that until I tell you about our sponsor. Thanks to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Fall weather's upon us, but you can get a chance to win some gear to prep you for the rain with our exclusive Vessi and LMG giveaway. Up for grabs are some stylish Vessi kicks, LTT store swag, and even some cool tech. There's seven different prize packs and it's completely free to enter. Just go to Vessi.com slash LMG and throw your email and phone number in for the maximum amount of entries. You'll even get a 20% coupon to use on Vessi store, but act quick, everything closes on October 31st. All right, HDR not enabled, always enable it in OLED, even if you don't like the Windows desktop experience, um, you get used to it, it's really not that bad, and then once games and applications actually take advantage, it's pretty good. Let me make sure the monitor is also, I don't want exit, I want settings. HDR on, 280 hertz, adaptive sync on, yeah, there's FreeSync Premium Pro, G-Sync uh, compatibility, we got the little NVIDIA G-Sync badge down there. Um, and then, you know, just look through the picture modes. What else we got? Brightness, peak brightness, high. I don't care if it's less accurate. I want high peak brightness. We'll get to labs results later because our colorimeter did come back. We were not lying to you. And we have tested this display. <laughs> Sound, uh, DCSX headphones. I don't think there's speakers. No, I don't think so, guys. I think, unfortunately, you don't get speakers. I think it's only for the headphone jack, which is, I'm a little sad. But what I wanna know is, how good does the HDR look? Cause they've got a True Black 500 rating, which is very impressive. It's one of the very few monitors that can do that. <sighs> yeah, it's really good. Here comes the arm. Man, I will absolutely never, ever, ever get tired of watching HDR footage on an OLED because it just looks incredible. Mini LED is really good, but it's not dimming zone per pixel level good. And because we're in that sweet spot of 27 inch 1440p, we're looking at about 111, 110 PPI, which is pretty solid. You know, it's obviously not a creator monitor, but pretty good nonetheless. And this looks fantastic. But what I wanna know is how great are those response times? Let's play some games. Hot diggity dang, this game looks so good when you're refreshing at 280 Hertz and actually getting the uh, horsepower from your 5090 or other good card to run it, that was a terrible death, but you know what, that's what happens when I choose a pistol. Like, you just, you whip and it's clear. Cause they've got that, I mean, they're advertising 0 0.03 milliseconds gray to gray, cause that's what OLED can kind of do. But we've measured it and it's like, I mean, not this one specifically, but we've measured OLEDs in the past and the pixels are just, it's like so close to, I mean, I guess 0 0.03 milliseconds is pretty close to instant anyway, but like, it's real, you guys, it's true. They just, you whip and it's clear. There's no, oh, and if someone moves past you like an object, as long as you're not using TAA, you're not gonna have these stupid ghosting trails and stuff as it goes by like, man, it's just so good. Oh, and like, yeah, obviously, you know, if you suck at games, it doesn't matter that much. Like you're gonna lose, but like when you've got the good monitor and you've got the good keyboard and mouse, the only thing you can blame is yourself at that point. It's funny because like when I was a kid, I used to play so much more Counter-Strike on a garbage CRT and then eventually on some garbage like LCD LED display, um, a laptop, I gamed on a gaming laptop for a pretty long time. And you know, I crush it, I did pretty well. Not like, I'm, I'm not like, you know, I'm not going to the finals or anything, but uh, I could get some headshots. And now that I've got all the hardware for it, I just never play anymore and it kind of sucks because like, man, it just feels so much better. Like if I was that good before, imagine how good I could have been if I had the hardware I needed. So a game's great, 
the HDR looks pretty good, but what do our actual test results have to say? Let's start with latency. At our max refresh rate of 280 Hz, we're measuring just 0.6 milliseconds over the theoretical perfect. And that kind of stays pretty true until we go down to 120 Hz, which was the only problematic area. We were hitting a total of 6.7 milliseconds or 2.5 milliseconds over theoretical perfect. So anyone console gaming might have a very, very minor latency issue. But like these numbers are so small that even at the total value of all your entire system latency, it's probably fine. As for brightness, we measured over the rated 1500 nits at 1744. Now that is in a peak 1% window, so you're not gonna obviously get that full screen. As for full screen brightness in HDR, we're hitting almost 400 nits sustained. That's really impressive for OLED, and I'm glad that it's kind of finally gotten to that point. As for SDR color accuracy, once we switched out of the out of the box mode, we got a very respectable Delta E average 2000 of 1.5 five with a max of a little under four and a half and as for hdr color accuracy it's not bad i wish it was a little better but we're reaching a delta e itp average of about 12 with a max of 23. and the nice thing about these tandem oled panels is lg has actually really managed to up the gamut coverage and so for bt 2020 they're matching or even beating qd oled at 84 percent coverage we couldn't get pricing because we've only got the hong kong price but it should be around $700 when it hits stores later this year. Whoa, Plue from the future here. For some reason, the pricing for this monitor is all over the place. On their Hong Kong website, it still comes out to around 700 bucks. But we also saw a Reddit post where people are getting it for as low as like $485. And now when you go to LG's website, they're selling it for a whopping 850 USD, which makes this a much harder sell. With how much competition there already is in the space for the new tech, it might be worth waiting for more offerings or seeing if you can get a great deal on a QD OLED. Hopefully LG can get the pricing lowered soon, but if the max price is all you see, maybe keep waiting. Whether you're excited for tandem OLEDs or not, this is the LG GX7 and uh, it's pretty sick. We're gonna have it available down in the links below if it's out in stores yet. If it's not, well, I'll just see you next time.